Welcome to this video on calculations involving gas volumes. Let's get straight into it. So we've got Avogadro's law here. He's just a scientist that worked with lots of different molecules and gases. And what he said and what he discovered is that equal volumes of gases at the same temperature and pressure contain equal numbers of molecules. So we only really understand these things if we have an example. So let's take an example. Let's take methane gas. Okay, and I am putting the state symbol here, G, which stands for gas, plus two oxygen molecules, also in the form of gas, is going to produce carbon dioxide gas plus two molecules of water. And the state that water is in is a liquid, really important to put the state of these molecules. So what does it mean if they have equal numbers of molecules? What it means is if I have, remember there's a one over here and there's a one over here, even though we haven't put it there, you can assume that there's a one. If, for example, I had 100 centimeters cubed, which is just the same as saying 100 mils, of methane gas and I combine it together with two molecules of oxygen gas, which would mean that we use 200 centimeters cubed because of the one to two ratio, it would mean that I would produce 100 centimeters cubed of carbon dioxide gas and 200 centimeters cubed of water. Okay, let's, let's go on to something that's quite simple. Um, Let's go a little bit further down. Okay, so over here, a very, very classic thing to be able to do is unit conversion. So in the previous example, unit conversions, we talked about centimeters cubed. We were talking about like 200 centimeters cubed, right? Now, what you need to be able to do is be able to convert that into decimeters cubed. That's the big unit that we always work with, decimeters cubed. So a thousand centimeters cubed is equal to one decimeter cubed. Remember that one decimeter cubed is the same as one liter. Okay, so really important to be able to convert between these two. So how do I get from like, say, for example, I'm working with 2000 centimeters cubed. How do I get that into decimeters cubed in terms of a number? You simply are going to divide by 1000 and your answer will simply be 2 decimeters cubed. Same as if I said how many centimeters cubed is 3 decimeters cubed is simply going to times by 1000. This is going to give me 3000 centimeters cubed. Okay, so let's go on to a, a problem involving, involving these liters and especially involving the idea of one mole. So this new heading what is the volume of one mole of a gas? So a typical question might be, what is the volume in liters? Remember, liters, another word for liters would be decimeters cubed that we just talked about, of 3.8 moles of CO2 gas at RTP. So room temperature is generally taken between 20 and 25 degrees Celsius, and pressure is normally taken at one atmosphere sometimes written 1 atm. So what does this mean? Well, one mole of any gas at room temperature and pressure will give you 24 liters of volume. So think about it as, uh, for example, as like a shoe box over here, and you had one mole of carbon dioxide gas, it would fill up a shoebox, if the shoebox was 24 liters, okay, length times breadth times width, think of that as a volume of space, that's how much one mole of any gas would take up, okay? So let's go back to our question. So one mole of CO2 equals 24 liters. Now, we know liters is decimeters cubed, so let's start writing that down. Now, we want to know what is 3.8 moles. So remember from previous calculations that if we've got one mole and we want 3.8 moles, we can use a simple calculation here. How does one get to three? We can work that out times by 
3.8. So we do the same thing to this side. Let's get the equals there nicely. Times this by 3.8. And you simply get out your calculator, which I'm doing now. And you go 24 times 3.80. And we get 90. Let's just do this in black. 91.2 decimeters cubed. Now, if you wanted to change this to uh, centimeters cubed, you would simply times this by 1000, and this would give you an answer of 91,200 centimeters cubed. So these two are obviously the same answer. Okay, let's go on to a new, a new question. What if, what if we switch this around here and we said how many moles? I mean, in the previous question, if you scroll a little bit up, previous question we're asking. Um, what is the volume in liters or decimeters cubed? Now we're asking how many moles are in 58.6 liters of nitrogen gas at room temperature and pressure. Remember at RTP, room temperature and pressure, one mole of any gas is going to give me 24 decimeters cubed. So now if we have one mole of nitrogen gas, which I can just write into the little G over here, is 24 decimeters cubed. Now, I'm wanting to find out how many moles are in 58.6 liters. Let's get the same units going here, decimeters cubed. So how does I, how do I get from 24 to 58.6? Simply type into your calculator 58.6 divided by 24. You get something like two points. I've got a times by 2.4. Four. Do the same thing to this side, and you can see one times anything is going to be itself. So the answer to this question is going to be, well, 58.6 decimeters cubes gives me 2.44 moles of N2 gas. There we go. Okay, let's do, let's do one more question. A little bit more tricky now. Okay, so we've got an equation at the bottom of here and we've got some information from that equation let's have a look so it says calculate the volume my final answer is going to be in in decimeters cubed of carbon dioxide so my final answer is looking for carbon dioxide here it is over here in the equation okay produced at room temperature and pressure so rtp we know that one mole of CO2 already is equal to 24 decimeters cubed, but we are definitely not gonna be working with one mole here. That would be too easy of a question. So what are we working with? When an excess of hydrochloric acid, dilute hydrochloric acid, that's over here, I'm gonna explain excess in a second, is added to one gram of calcium carbonate. So we've only got one gram of this. Now remember, we never work with grams with the equations. We have to always convert two moles so let's do that first okay let's get this equation um, one gram of CaCO3 is going to equal a certain number of moles okay and to do this we simply use our equation which says number of moles that we're looking for is equal to the mass over its molar mass all right, and the molar mass would be what they've given you from the equation. You can work out if I've got carbon that is 12 grams per mole, um, oxygen 16 and calcium 40. We can then calculate this by going, okay, well, how many moles? We've got 1.00 grams. What's the, what's the molar mass? Well, we've got calcium, which is 40, that's from the equation, plus carbon, which is 12 plus oxygen, which is 16, but we need times this by three. This is gonna, if you could crush it into your calculator, it's gonna work out to be 100, okay? So one divided by 100 is 0 0.01 moles. Excellent, okay, so now that we've done that, let's just neaten this up, okay? And we've got 0 0.01 moles, one gram of CaCO3 gives me 0 0.01 moles of CaCO3, calcium carbonate. Okay, so let's almost write a new equation at the bottom here. So we're working with, now we're not working with one mole, we're working with 0 0.01 moles of, of this substance over here. So let's go 0 0.01, calcium carbonate. Okay, 
Now we're going to use the mole ratios. Now remember it said that hydrochloric acid is in excess. So we've got so much of this stuff, we don't even need to know how many moles it is because we're only going to be working with 0 0.01 calcium. That's going to run out and that's going to be the end of the reaction. Okay. But remember the mole ratios. Remember one mole of this, two moles of this, gives me one mole of this, one mole of this, and one mole of this. What does that mean? It means if I use 0 0.01 moles of calcium carbonate, I'm going to create 0 0.01 moles of calcium Cl2, which is calcium chloride. I'm also going to make 0 0.01 moles of CO2, which is exactly what we're looking for, and 0 0.01 moles of H2O. Now, that's given us the answer. Well, we know that one mole of CO2 in the beginning of this question, I said is 24 decimeters cubed, right? So how much would 0 0.01 from what I've just worked out, moles of CO2, how many liters, well, not liters, but what would the volume be? If you go back to the question, calculate the volume, and remember the volume is in decimeters cubed or liters. So how do we go from one to 0 0.01, simply times by 0 0.01, do the same to the other side, type it into your calculator so long, and what you'll get is 0 0.24 decimeters cubed of CO2. Okay, what you could also do is work this out um, in terms of centimeters cubed or milliliters times this by a thousand, you'll get 240 centimeters cubed. Awesome, everyone. I hope it's been super helpful.